We're introducing a new model in Denoise AI version 3.3, specifically built to provide even better results for raw files, and that model name is called RAW. Now, there are a few workflow considerations that you need to think about depending on how you use Denoise AI, and I'll walk you through some of them. But it's important for you to figure out what workflow process works best for you. Also, I'm currently using a beta version of Denoise AI version 3.3, but the processes I show you will be exactly the same with the final release. Now, if you're someone who uses Denoise AI as a standalone application without any other host applications, then one of the options that you'll want to make sure you activate is under preferences, and you'll want to turn on this apply raw color correction option. This will allow us to apply a camera specific DCP profile to your raw file when you open it up directly, and it'll help improve the color and tone. If you're using Lightroom to send your raw file to Denoise AI, then I'd recommend disabling that, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, the other setting that's really important to consider is AI processor. If you have CPU selected, I highly recommend either selecting the GPU that's labeled or the auto option, which will select the most appropriate setting based on your computer configuration. And so again, as a standalone workflow, basically what you'll do is click on the browse button and navigate to a raw file and then select it and click open. And I'll go ahead and move the focus box over this little insect. We can zoom in even more and you can see the improvements that the raw model applies in terms of noise reduction and retaining edge detail. And the primary benefit of the raw model is that it's using the actual raw sensor data to apply the noise reduction. So that'll result in less artifacts and blotchiness, especially when you compare it to applying noise reduction to a processed RGB file like a JPEG or a PNG or TIFF file. And if I press, you can see here's the original version of the photo. And then when we let go, you can see that all that noise has been removed. And if you go to the model list by clicking on this button over here, you still have access to all of the other existing models. But the important point that I want to make here is that the raw model will only be available when you open up a supported raw file in Denoise AI. If you open up a JPEG, for example, this raw model will be grayed out. And then when you're ready to save the file, click on the save image button. And I recommend selecting the DNG file format just to make sure that you retain as much information as possible in the output file. All right, now let's move on to a Lightroom workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And then, like I mentioned, because I use Lightroom Classic, I opt to disable this option to apply raw color correction. I also disable the auto lens correction option as well because I tend to handle that in Lightroom. And so I'll close this out and move over to Lightroom over here where I've got three different raw files. The first and the third files were taken with Sony cameras. The first one was taken with a Sony A9 and the third one was taken with a Sony A7R Mark III. And then the middle raw file was taken with a Canon EOS R5 camera. Now there are a few workflow discrepancies that you have to consider whether you're using Windows or Mac. On the Mac, you have the ability to take a raw file from the grid view and drag it onto the denoise icon and it'll open up. Now you can do this with a single image or you can do this with multiple images in case you want to do some batch processing. So I'm gonna show that to you right now. I'm gonna select these two wildlife photos over here. Both of them are unedited, so they're in their original state as imported in from Lightroom. I'm gonna take them and drag them onto the denoise icon and then go over to denoise and you'll see now that I have two different files, one for each of the photos that I had selected. And so I'll go ahead and for this photo, I'll just put it over here just to make sure that the results look good and they do. And then I'll go to this hawk photo and make sure that the results look good here as well. Now you'll notice that we have a new auto model selection option, which will suggest the most appropriate model to use. And because we open up raw files, we are suggesting the raw model. But again, you can always go to the model list and change the model to one that suits your taste better. Now, if you wanna save both photos, just click on the save to images button, but you also have the option to just save a single one. All you need to do is deselect the photo that you don't want to save and it won't get saved. But I do wanna save both of them, so I'm gonna 
check both of those boxes and click on the save to images. In this batch process, I'm gonna drop down and select DNG as my file format. And here's a very important point, whether you're saving a single photo or multiple photos in this Lightroom workflow, you wanna make sure that the source button is selected and that'll ensure that the output files are saved in the same directory as the original raw files. And that makes a big impact in just a second. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click on start. and return back to Lightroom. Now that we're in Lightroom, you'll notice that those new files are not in the grid view. And that's because there's one important step to make and this is where that source file destination is important. Now that we have those files in the source folder, all you need to do is right click on the source folder that the raw files are stored in and then select synchronize folder. You'll now see that there are two photos that will be imported. We're gonna click on synchronize and now you'll see that you have the original raw files and then the DNG output files. And we can go ahead and select the raw and the DNG and then go into compare mode just to see the improvements that are made. And you can also see if we go to the develop module with the DNG file, you'll see that you have all of your white balance options, uh, the same that you would have if you were working with the original raw file as well as if you go to the profiles browser, you have all of the Adobe profiles as well as the camera matching profiles, if it's applicable. And same thing, let's go ahead and compare this raw file with this DNG file just to see. And you can see all of the improvements, all of that noise has been removed, but we've preserved all of that important edge detail. Now, let's say you want to make an edit to this photo. One of the things you could do is let's say you were working on your raw file to begin with. You can go to the develop module over here and say, open up the exposure just a bit, maybe bring the white point out and add some contrast. You can go ahead and take that raw file and then select the DNG file. And then in the library panel on the right, there's a sync settings button and then just make sure that you have all of the options that you changed selected. So just about everything I did was over here in the basic tone section. So I can disable these options here and click synchronize. And then you can see now that we've synchronized the edits between the two. Now, what happens if you are working with a raw file that you already edited before sending it to Denoise AI? Well, that's the case here with this photo. Um, so if I go to the develop module and press the backslash key, you can see that is the original unedited photo. Uh, and then this is the version that I edited in Lightroom. So just like before, I'll go to the grid view and I'll take the image and I'll drag it onto Denoise AI. And I'll just pan around to make sure that everything is looking good with the raw model. And you'll notice that I have another file that was already open. Now I don't want to save that again because I already saved it. So I wanna make sure that I'll deselect that checkbox and I only have the active document selected and then I'll click on save image. And like before, I'm gonna make sure that I have DNG selected as well as source and then click save. Then let's go back to Lightroom We'll right click on this folder and select synchronize folder and then click synchronize. And when we go back to the raw folder here with all of our images, you can see here is the original and our processed photo. But as you can see now, the image is obviously different because when you send a raw file to Denoise AI, it doesn't read any of the changes that you've made to the raw file. It'll only work on the original raw file. So just like before, you can select the original edited raw file and then select the Denoise DNG and then click on the sync settings button and make sure that you have all of the settings that you've changed on the image selected and then click synchronize. And now when we compare them, you can see that they look a lot closer. And there are some things that you might have to manually tweak. 
For example, let's look over here in the highlights. You can see in the original photo, we have a little bit more detail in this sign over here, um, but it's a little bit more blown out here. And that's just a matter of working with the highlight slider. So that's not a problem. But more importantly, notice all of the noise over here in the original that has been removed in the edited photo. And then same thing here. We have all of this noise that's kind of distracting from the photo, but it's all been removed and we've still preserved a lot of that edge detail. Now, if we go back to the grid view, I mentioned that with Mac, you can take a photo from the grid view and drag it onto the denoise icon. And unfortunately that just doesn't work on Windows. I don't know if it's a Windows issue or an Adobe issue, but it just doesn't work. So the way that you would use Lightroom with denoise is on Windows, you would right click on the folder that contains your raw file and you would select the show in Explorer option. On Mac, we call it Finder, but that will open up a folder that has all of your raw files. And then you can take that raw file and drag it onto the denoise icon, just like you would on Mac. And so to recap again, to get the most out of the raw model in denoise AI, we recommend sending that raw file to denoise as early in your workflow as possible, ideally just after you import it into Lightroom or you can always just open the file in Denoise AI directly. And if you're using Lightroom, remember to select the DNG option for your saved file and the source option for the destination. We're really excited for you to start using this new raw model and we can't wait to hear what you think. Thanks a lot.